How do we strengthen our will? Well, you'll notice with all of these discussions about emotions that we've had, all of them so far we've talked about a lot to talk about the use of our will. Mm -hmm. And so it makes sense then that we're going to have to use our will in certain directions. If I first can mention the directions in which we need to use our will, if we're going okay. to progress in towards God, we're going to need to use our will to receive God's love. Mm -hmm. We're going to need to use our will to give God love. Mm -hmm. We're going to need to use our will to, to receive love from others. Mm -hmm. And we're going to need to use our will to give love to others. We're going to need to use our will to become a more loving person. Mm -hmm. We're going to be needing to be using our will so that we receive more truth, so that we love truth. So seeking truth. We would need to use our will to seek truth. Yeah. We wouldn't want to oppose truth. We'd also want to use our will to tell the truth, to speak the truth, both to ourselves and to other people. We don't want to fool ourselves with lies, nor do we want to deceive other people with lies. So we'd want to tell the truth to ourselves and to others. And we'd have to use our will to do that. And we're going to have to use our will to become more humble individuals and even use our will to allow other people to be humble around us. So that's a lot of exercise of our will yeah. that we're going to need to engage. So the question then becomes, how do I engage my will mm -hmm. in appropriate ways? Well, there are a number of things that you need to do to engage your will, I feel. The first thing I feel is that at some point, you need to see the benefits of doing so. And the only thing that really helps you see the benefits of doing so is hearing God's truth on a matter. So, so at some point, God's truth will convince us enough. It's like getting to know the truth about God and about the universe will convince us enough that we need to engage our will in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. It's like any relationship. So if I wanted to have a relationship with you and I just saw you over the other side of the, wheel, uh, of the room, yeah. I would have to use my will to walk over and speak with you yes. if I wanted to get to know more about you. Uh -huh. I would, if I wanted to love you and express my love towards you, I'd have to use my will to do so. Yeah. You would have to allow me to express that will in order to receive it. Yeah. Like, so if I wanted to give you a hug, you'd have to allow me to give you a hug, otherwise yeah. you wouldn't get one. Right? Yeah. So can you see there's a lot of ways in which we could use our will and, and I have to see the truth of it first. Mm -hmm. I have to see the truth that I need to take some personal action if I want to receive the benefits. There is no magical solution here where someone will come along and make my will change. It is my will. Yeah. I'm the person who will need to change it. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, how do I change it? Well, the first way to change it is by knowing or being open to receiving the truth about, an in, about something, particularly God's truth about something. About... Anything. Anything. Yep. So in any direction, let's say I wanted to hear, uh, you know, let's say I wanted to become more loving. I'd have to be open to hearing God's truth about love rather than the world's truth about love. Because the world's truth about love basically is it's going to cause you lots of pain. You're going to have lots of crying. It's going to be very, very hard. And somebody will probably leave you anyway. And at the end of it, all, it's probably hopeless. And, you know, most of us end up alone anyway. That's the world's truth about love. Mm -hmm. Well, that's completely opposite to God's truth about love. Now, if I believe the world's truth about love, am I ever going to really want to love? Probably not, because the world's truth about love is telling me there's a whole heap of negatives <laughs> and there's no positives. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's no upside. There's no upside, there's a lot of downsides. So, yeah. so the average person on earth doesn't want to learn more about love mm -hmm. because their current definition of love is severely flawed. Yeah. Once I learn that my definition of love is severely flawed and want to have a desire to, to reverse that, I will then probably, after hearing some truth about love, that God is love and it's not the same as the world's love and the reality is there's no pain in real love and all this kind of thing, and it starts to appeal to my desire, yep. I will begin to develop a desire to become more loving as a result. So that's one motivation. Yep. So I could say developing desire comes through knowledge, the development of knowledge. Mm -hmm. right? And that knowledge has to be based around the truth. And this is one way we develop our will, by focusing on desire for knowledge about truth. Mm -hmm. Another way we focus on the use of our will is by looking at what prevents us from exercising our will. Fear is a major preventer of exercising our will in positive directions. Yeah. We are afraid of things. We, we are afraid of many things that we don't need to be afraid of, in fact. 
Now, if I learn the truth that I don't need to be afraid of it, at some point I'm going to have to feel that I don't need to be afraid of it, which is going to mean needing to deal with my feelings about the matter of what I'm afraid of. Yeah. I need to use my will. I start to see the intellectual wisdom of using my will in the direction where I no longer have fear within me, that I get somehow get rid of fear. Yeah. And so I would then need to exercise my will in that direction. So if, I'm, if I can see the truth that, that fear prevents the exercise of my will, then I'll probably develop a desire to feel my fears and release them. Yes. Right? I'll probably develop a desire to get rid of them. That's an essential part of using my will. Mm -hmm. So what I've only mentioned now is two things. The development of the desire, right, in terms of for truth. Yes. And then developing a desire to release fear, yeah. to, to, to release the error, which is all based around fear. I would also need to, at some point, develop a desire along, you know, to, to, to progress or grow. Now, unfortunately for most people, they don't develop a desire to grow unless they're in extreme pain. Mm. And unfortunately, pain becomes a great motivator for somebody to exercise their will in a different direction. Mm. In fact, many people who have progressed on the natural love path have only begun their progress because they were in so much pain in the hills, they wanted it to stop. And then they began their progress. Yeah. So often times you can see that if we're sensitive to pain, there may be a likelihood that we'll progress, we'll use our will in a different direction. Right? that will desire to use our will. So it makes sense then that one of the things that's going to help my will be motivated, developed, is by becoming sensitive to pain. Yeah. It makes logical sense. Yeah. I need to allow myself to become sensitive to, logical pain, to logically to pain in order for myself to see the need to get out of pain mm -hmm. and then to develop a desire to get out of pain. Mm -hmm. So if I'm sensitive to pain, that will certainly motivate my will. So the more sensitive I am to pain, the better it's going to be for the exercise of my will. Mm -hmm. And while we could list many more things, these are, they are just three things that we've listed so far that where we can develop our will and, and actually exercise our will, like grow it. Will is like a muscle. Yep. And it's like any muscle, it will not grow unless it is exercised. Uh, so while you remain apathetic, will cannot grow. So learn how to not be apathetic anymore. Learn to have a decision, to have a choice. Learn to actually have an opinion. It doesn't matter even if the opinion's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's better than having no opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Learn how to express your opinions. This will help the development of your will. You will soon have feedback when your opinions are out of harmony with love by God giving you this feedback through all of God's laws and you'll see when your opinions are in harmony with love, generally. Mm. But you need to engage your will to have an opinion <laughs> <laughs> and that will help you develop your will further. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> engaging with uh, thoughts, feelings, opinions, desires without facade is going to help us connect to how our will is already being exercised yes. and also to strengthen it like the muscles that you mentioned. Yes. And like every, if anybody has ever done any weights exercises, they know that the more resistance that they have, the stronger the muscle they build. Mm -hmm. So they know that the more something resists you, yeah. in the case of a weight, the more you have to struggle to lift it, the more your body adapts to the new level of, of strength required to lift that particular thing. Yep. It's exactly the same kind of thing we, if we want to develop our will. We need to understand that we need to place ourselves in situations that require us to overcome resistance. Mm -hmm. Right? This is one great way, taking some action now, to overcome resistance, right, to the development of our will, to, to the exercise of our will. Yep. 
So instead of avoiding situations, which most people do, instead of avoiding the situations where people oppose us mm -hmm. and oppose the exercise of our will, we would start to engage situations where people oppose our will. And we'd still exercise our will yep. in a loving manner. Yep. And this will cause, it's like resistance to our, our muscles. It's like causing us to have to be stronger with our will in order to make the breakthrough. And this doesn't mean that we'd be nasty. It just means that we're strong, have to be stronger in the exercise of our will. So in situations where usually we would have a different opinion or desire to do something and we that don't is express still in it harmony and we don't with love, it. Yep. Yep. where we usually just become passive and don't engage our will. Correct. It would be engaging our will. And exercising our will, growing it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Making sure that it's in harmony with love. If we grow it by actually engaging those situations. Yes. By actually, you know, having the confronting talk or having the situation you're afraid of, actually, you're now engaged in the situation you're afraid of. Mm -hmm. It's an exercise of your will now. You have to use your will now to overcome this thing that's opposing you. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of using your will in this regard is you're exercising it. Mm -hmm. You're realising the great joy that can come from the exercise of your own will. And once you start feeling joy in the exercise of your own will, there's a higher likelihood that you'll further exercise your will. See, most people have had a lot of pain and suffering in the exercise of their will as, as a child, and so they have little joy in exercising their will as an adult. So what we need to do instead is allow ourselves to, have, to, to develop this joy of exercising our will by engaging confronting situations which we would normally avoid, and allow ourselves to exercise our will through the engagement of the situation. And this will exercise our will. This will grow our will. And your will needs to grow because at the end of the day, if you want to become at one with God and you want to be loving and you want to love the, everyone in the world, even though they don't love you, you're going to have to use your will <laughs> to do all of those things. Yeah. So you definitely want to learn how to grow your will. So we've been through basically four things. Now we could list many, many more things about the exercise of our will. And what we will do, with, we will have, while we've put this in the emotions frequently asked questions, the reality is it also deserves attention by itself. And so we will have, in fact, a whole series about the use of free will, the use of our will, that we'll answer questions about in the future. And we will engage more ways in which a person can grow their will rather than just remain empathetic and wait for some miracle <laughs> to come along or wait some for some saviour to come along to save them from the exercise of their own responsibility to use their own will. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah.